you're a cash buyer and you buy properties in cash, or you're a first time buyer and you're buying a property in cash, you wanna make sure that you are not making these 10 mistakes. You can look at this video as almost like a cash buyer checklist. It's definitely something you need to watch out for. You're not going through a lender. You're not having an, a, mor a mortgage. So a lot of times any of these things get overlooked because you do not have a lender reminding you to take care of these things. I'm going to start out here with a little bit of a horror story. So there was a gentleman that had a second home vacation property in Maui. He actually sold his home to buy a apartment complex in Tooele, Utah, right? This is gonna be a huge investment. It's going to have retirement cash flow. Like this is gonna be his nest egg, right? He sells his property in Maui. He buys this apartment complex in Tooele. Well, guess what he fails to do? He fails to get insurance on the property. What happens? A few days after he closes on the property, it burns down because somebody left a candle lit. Can you believe that? We want to avoid that at all costs. So make sure you stick around and listen to this video, especially if you are buying a house in cash, make sure you're really doing these things. Some of these items you might be like, no duh, Nicole, I already know this. I buy homes all the time. I'm the super real estate investor. I know what I'm doing. I buy properties all the time in cash. I know what I'm doing. This is just a great reminder to not forget about these items and many of them need to take place during your due diligence. The first item that you do not want to forget about is doing a title search on the property. I find it much easier that when you are a cash buyer that you go with the seller's title company and you still will get a title search but you want to make sure what you're buying is in fact clear and free of any liens and encumbrances and that the seller does have marketable title and they are actually the owner and can sell the property to you. The second thing that you want to do is you want title insurance. And this is especially important when you are buying like a foreclosed or distressed property. Those types of things don't really happen in Park City very often. You're usually buying second home luxury vacation properties or you're buying a primary residence. The third thing that you never want to skip out on if you're a cash buyer is the home inspection. I've had a lot of cash buyers that actually waive this and I actually make them sign a form that's saying, I choose to waive the inspection because it really goes against my conscience, my good conscience to allow somebody to buy a property that hasn't been inspected because two months down the line, when something goes wrong, you're coming back to me and you're mad. But when I encourage you, hey, you need to get a home inspection. You need to know what's going on with this property. You need to know what you're buying. I think that's one of the most important things that you should absolutely do as a buyer. You don't want hidden problems or hidden expenses and you want to know what you're actually buying. Now, the fourth thing that you might want to do is get a survey or do some other inspections on the home. Maybe you need to get a termite inspection. Maybe you want to look for mold, do an infrared inspection. Maybe you want to do test for radon. There are many other tests and types of inspections that you can do on the property not that go along with doing the home inspection. I would say the fifth thing is that knowing what the property taxes are, you want to know what the property taxes will be on the property. This is also something that happens during your due diligence phase. If it's a second home, you're obviously going to be paying more in taxes than if it was a primary residence. Seventh thing that you want to do is get an appraisal. Obviously in today's market, people are waiting home inspections inspections, they're waiving all contingencies, they're waiving an appraisal. But if this is in fact important to you and you want to know the true value of the home, I always suggest getting appraisal, but you don't have to make your offer contingent on an appraisal. And if it comes in below market and the only way to get the house is to offer over market value, that's your choice if you still want to pursue that property. However, I think going in and knowing what the property is actually worth is a great thing to know. You want to know if it appraises. You want to know if you're buying a home that is actually worth what you're paying for. The next one is getting a survey on the property. I think that if you are spelling, spending millions of dollars on a home, you want to know 
where your property line is, especially if you're buying acreage or land. This is something that is very important. You want to know your neighbor's driveway is encroaching on the property and you have no idea. A survey is really important, especially if you're spending millions of dollars. There are people that spend five million. If you're spending $5 million on a home, you don't get a survey on the house and then you realize that your neighbor's driveway is actually on your property, that becomes a problem and that is actually a true story. Can't do anything about it once the home is closed, right? But you didn't get the survey, so you didn't know. Next, you want to make sure that you're not in a flood zone and you can actually go to FEMA in the property address and it will tell you if you're in a flood zone because you'll definitely want to get flood insurance if that is the case. And going to FEMA is actually really easy to do and it, you just type in the property address. The next thing that you want to do is get homeowners insurance. You want to make sure that this property is in fact insurable and that if anything goes wrong, that you will be able to have, that you have insurance on this property. So don't be the cash buyer that it's to get homeowners insurance and then something unforeseen happens and God forbid you're out of luck. You can't do anything about it. Next thing that you want to make sure that you're getting from the bot, from the seller is the property condition disclosure form. And all of this stuff, you're like, no, Donna Cole, this, this is stuff that we do during the due diligence. But a lot of times people overlook this stuff, obviously give you a due diligence checklist. If you want to know what I'm talking about when you're a buyer and what you need to do due diligence wise, there's actually 24 items we recommend. It's a lot to take in and you really need to look over that document carve time out of your day it's really hard when you're a busy person and you don't have time to carve time out of your day to look over inspection reports to look over the due diligence to really make sure that you are doing what you need to do that everything that you are performing during your due diligence is of material concern to you you have to remember that as an agent i am the source of the source for you i cannot do your due diligence for you so it is really important that you carve time out of your day and make room to make this happen anything that's recorded on a property condition disclosure will be recorded so if there was a leak it'll say hey yes there was a leak this is how we repaired it got a new roof um, yes, we remodeled the property. Oh yes, we were having trouble with our fridge or the bathtub, you know, isn't draining fully. We completely ripped out all the plumbing and put all new plumbing in. That are Those are the sort of things that will be revealed on a property condition disclosure. And you really can't sell a house without filling one out. So you will always get a property condition disclosure, but you need to make sure you read it, sign as anything that comes up on that. That might be something you want the home inspector to actually look into further and say, hey, you know, the, the roof was leaking. They got a new roof. How does it look? And the next thing that you want to check out, obviously, is the HOA fees, buyer transfer fees, master HOA fees. And if you are, in fact, buying into a gated community to have to pay for a social membership or a golf membership. And, you know, like if you're buying into the Talisker Club, you know, that's a hundred grand extra on top of your closing costs and your inspection, your appraisals, your surveys, all that types of thing. Also, if you're buying out in Hideout, you have a 1% buyer transfer fee. If you're buying in the Canyons Village, it's a 2% buyer transfer fee. And the majority of the time, the buyer is responsible for paying that. Sometimes you can negotiate it. Other times they're like, nope, when I bought the property, I paid for it. The seller didn't cover it for me. However, there are instances where they're like, hey, we'll pay half because when we bought the property, the seller paid half for us. But knowing what the transfer fee are in the area that you're purchasing. If you're buying in a gated community, realizing that you will have HOE fees on top of a master association, on top of membership fees, and you could be into the two hundreds of thousands of dollars extra just to buy into an exclusive gated luxury community. So can you do what you want with the property on the HOA fee? Many HOAs will not allow you to park an RV or a boat in your driveway. So you'll have to find a storage unit for that. Or will you be able to add on and make the garage bigger so that you can actually pull your boat into the garage? You'll want to look over all those HOA documents and make sure that you can actually do to the property um, architecturally what you want to improve upon it 
And so you'll want to look over those HOA documents and they can be really, really dry. And whatever you have questions with, you'll want to come back to me with that so that I can ask those questions for you and get them in writing. If you like more of my videos and you find this content super useful and helpful, please consider checking out some more videos in my library. And as always, I'm a local real estate agent in Park City, Utah. My name is Nicole Battle. If you'd like to contact me, my information is always down in the description below. Thank you.